Hello, barbarians, and happy D&D Essentials Kit Day. Ah. So I am just going to do a quick unboxing, and what will make mine a little bit different maybe than some of the other ones that are up is I'm going to give you my perspective as a DM of how I would use some of these things, what the value is, and kind of talk about it compared to the starter kit that came out quite a while ago. So first thing to talk about, the cover of the Essentials Kit, very glossy, of the box. Um, it has a very R.A. Salvatore feel, feels very Icewind Dale um, and liken it. It also helps differentiate it from the starter kit since it does look very different, but it has the same sort of theme. The first thing that you see when you open the box are these red, like kind of candy red dice. They are very translucent. Um, I would say they're very Jolly Rancher looking. <laughs> um, I don't tend to prefer personally using the dice that come with these kits as my primary dice. But what I do as a DM is I'll take these dice that come with these various kits and I'll put them in a separate dice bag. And that's the dice bag I use when I have guests over, uh, new players who don't have their own dice yet, that sort of thing, to give them something to play with that is very legible, very easy to roll, just not my preferred fancy sparkly pretty dice. The next thing that we see in the box is the actual adventure book for Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. The first thing I noticed about this was how substantial it seems. It's not the kind of staple bound little booklet that you sometimes see on free RPG day or with other starter kits. It actually has a pretty decent kind of bookshelf ready binding. It doesn't have a title on the side, but it's a, it's pretty sturdy feeling. It's 64 pages of content and that doesn't include the intro to the rules. So really it starts with a little a few notes on running the adventure and using some of the items that came in the box. And then after that first two page spread, it goes directly into the adventure and the region the adventure is in. One of the things I've noticed so far about this adventure that has me pretty excited is even though it takes place in the same region as our starter kit adventure, you'll notice there's a Fandolin map right there for those of you familiar with it. Um, the thing that feels really cool to me is that just two pages after that, we immediately get into some maps that look like straight up dungeons. And there are quite a few of them. I mean, this adventure feels like Dungeons and Dragon, at least. Um, and I think for players learning the game, it provides a really authentic feel for what D&D is. Um, I am really enjoying what I'm seeing of this so far. But we'll get back to the adventure a little bit later. The next thing that we see in this box is this little guy. It's flat packed, but if you just kind of pop it open, you'll see that it is a box labeled Essentials Kit. Now, the purpose of this box is to hold all your cards because the Essentials Kit comes with a bunch of cards, a bunch of punch out cards to make new players have an easier time with documentation and understanding things and to help a DM out a lot in their prep, giving tactile pieces of the adventure to your players. So the first set of cards are these guys. You'll notice they say initiative on the back and on the front they have numbers. In this way, you can establish the order of initiative with a handy little number. So who's one, who's two, who's three, etc. The next sets of cards are um, some status cards and some combat cards. The status cards are very cute. On one side, they have little illustrations kind of showing what's going on in the different statuses. Um, those illustrations will look pretty familiar from other content, 
But on the other side, there are full descriptions of those things. And at the bottom, you have three cards that are labeled combat on the back. On the front, they're basically cheat sheets, kind of like you see with certain board games, that give the players a guide to what they can do in the turn during combat. And so it just kind of summarizes surprise, positioning, initiative, and turns, and how those tend to work. The next set of cards are character cards. I love these because something that I do in my games is I will often print out character art, not only for the player characters, but for the creatures and characters they run into. And this is already done for you with these cards. So on the back, you'll see that they have these lovely character portraits. And on the other side are stats and information. So it's really easy for a DM to show the card, be like, this is who you see. Um, but on their side is all of the information that you need. So it's really easy for the DM to show this card, tell the party this is who you're seeing, but on their side of the card, it is all of the information for that character, their personality, their traits, so that they know how to role play that person. The next four pages of cards are magic items. Um, on the back, it just says magic item to keep it nice and mysterious. On the front side is the name and all of the statistics for that given magic item that you are bequeathing to your players. So on a DM side, you can use it when they first find the item to give them hints about what it may do. Um, but again, this is a card that you can actually hand to the player so they have a really easy, quick reference for what that does. Kind of going back towards fourth edition where we had cards for everything. And I know they've done some official release cards for spells because I think that part of fourth edition was actually really helpful having detailed quick references for spells. Um, if you're not using D&D Beyond for your character sheets, then it's really hard if you're playing a spellcaster or even a player with certain abilities to know exactly what they do without looking them up every time. The last card page is labeled quest, and you will see that there are actually a number of mini quests that you can send the players on. It has the look sort of like a, a job board, um, or a notice board. There are a lot of really cool third-party books um, that come out for those when the official adventures come out that give players a little bit of room to make decisions about what sort of jobs they take on or how they help in the area that they're in. And this one is no exception. It's a very nifty. It has lots of different options. Um, and I think this will be really fun. Next thing in the box is a fold-out map. So pretty cool. We have a large version of the map of Fendlin. Very glossy, very high quality colors look good. And it does appear to be um, a pretty friendly player version that does give them um, identifiers for where main places in town are. And then on the back, you'll see it's a map of the region. So this is the Sword Coast area around Neverwinter that gives them an idea of where they are on the Sword Coast and in the Forgotten Realms. Sometimes what I'll do when I have access to a large format map like that, like I really like the one in Waterdeep, um, is I will get a magnetic whiteboard and I will put it up on the whiteboard so that players have a chance to actually examine it and talk through their strategies for how they're getting somewhere or um, how they want to approach a certain area. Next thing in the box, we have the Essentials Kit Rule Book. This is much more substantial than the Starter Kit Rule Book. Um, it actually, and I'll say there's two main differences that I've noticed. Um, one is that in the Starter Kit, it relied on using pre-made adventures as a way to quickly get players into the game. The Essentials Kit walks you through character creation. It includes that part of the rules so that players get a feel for how it is to build your own persona in the game. The other thing that it includes that many of us have been very excited about is the solo play alternative rules. 
So that's on page 63. Now this rule book is 64 pages, so that means there's not a lot of information on it, but it does come from the sidekick information they released in Unearth Arcana. So you can see here that page. Um, the sidekick rules basically enable small group or solo player campaigns by giving them access to NPCs that have extra abilities to help them round out their own skill set. So they can utilize the abilities of their helpers without actually running to full characters or more. Um, and the sidekicks do level up with the character. They earn XP and level. Um, but instead of having a true class, they come in three main flavors. There are spellcasters, experts, and warriors. So we'll start with the kind of more straightforward one. Spellcasters are magic users, and a lot of the abilities that they get um, are in line with that. And you can choose a healer type or more of a damaging spellcaster type. Um, and the spells they have access to are pretty limited to keep it simple, but very evocative of what that role should be. The warrior sidekick can be an attacker type who's more likely to hit, or a defender type. They can also be melee or ranged. In this way, you have a lot of flexibility for choosing a role that will best fit what's missing um, with the player character you have. The last sidekick type is the expert. Um, and when you think about previous editions, about skilled classes, it's very much that. They have these tools to help you unlock things, maybe deal with traps, and they can use the help action in many cases, which just gives a single player advantage or a bigger likelihood for success, even though they're the only one rolling for something. On page 64, the last page in the rules, it provides information about extra abilities you can give to your sidekicks as they level with your characters. And if your group, your single player, or your maybe your duo who needs a little bit of help, as they go up in level, this gets you all the way to level six, which is what the adventure covers in the essentials kit. But for DMs, this gives us a lot of flexibility in understanding what else we might be able to do with those in a longer format campaign. And I'm sure we're gonna see more about this over the next few months. Next thing in the box, yes, there's a lot in here, um, is sort of what I would consider a mini DM screen. So it is pretty large, the art on it is rad. Um, but it's definitely, I mean, it's more like cardstock. It's not the like hardcover book sort of material that we see in the standalone DM screens. Um, and the content is the same as the revised DM screen that's already available. But for being included in the box, I think this is a great starter DM screen. I actually really like the revised DM screen for D&D because it really sticks to the basics of that stuff you reference all the time and don't wanna make up or go back to the book for. The next thing we have in the box are these pre-printed character sheets. Now pre-printed in that they're blanks, but the cool thing about it, it's on really quality um, paper stock. You do get a bunch of copies. It's more than you need for a single standard group. Um, and again, high enough quality that you can make copies of these if that's something you had access to. Um, but again, you can always print your own, go online and do that. But these are definitely very high quality um, character sheet printouts. Nice paper stock. And then the last thing in the box and something I was very excited about um, is this lovely page. Welcome adventurer. Um, it lets you know about some of the other products if you decide to get deeper into the game, your core books, things like that. But on the back of that sheet is the important part. There are three QR codes slash URLs and codes if you wanna go that route that basically lead you to D&D Beyond. The first QR code is to find additional adventure content. From what I've heard following D&D Beyond and other news so sources is that um, there will be kind of follow-ups to this adventure being released over the next few months. So I'm really excited to see what that looks like. The second code is the actual code to unlock all of this Essentials Kit content in D&D Beyond. It's the first time we've been able to buy a book or equivalent and get 
it in D&D Beyond as well. And that's awesome. I know a lot of people, their main issue with D&D Beyond is double buying content. Even though I know at my table, I often buy more than one copy of a book because we have to share it as a group. Um, but that makes it so much easier that you're buying the content and then you also get it on D&D Beyond. The last code is for maybe if you got this kit because you're new to the game, like truly new, it gives you 50% off the player's handbook on D&D Beyond. So it reduces the cost of getting into the game. Um, and obviously I don't need that. I have the player's handbook on D&D Beyond. I have two copies of it on my table for my players. Um, and so if there are any of you out there who would like to try this out on D&D Beyond, maybe you've been um, reluctant about buying it on there, or maybe this is your first foray into D&D. I really like D&D Beyond, even on my local games, I use it for character sheets and to be able to create and print out handout content. Um, but if you're interested in that, since I don't need the code, please tweet me at Barbarian Rainy, and the first person who sends me a tweet with a good reason for wanting that 50% off, I will send you the code from our box. All right, so DM's perspective. What do I think that this kit is most useful for? Well, I think that it's very helpful in a couple of ways. One, like the starter kit, it is a great entry into Dungeons and Dragons, particularly in fifth edition. Um, I think it handles that really well. Um, I've heard, I mean, a lot of people really like the Lost Minds of Phandelver, Lamop, um, but I have a feeling that Dragon of Icefire Peak is going to be very high up there with that, if not eventually overtake it. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, one is that with the changes to the sidekick rules, no matter who you have access to to play the game, even if it's a roommate or a sibling or a significant other, um, one friend who's willing to come over and do this stuff, you can still run the game effectively. Um, and the adventure is written in such a way that it keeps that in mind. Two, I think Lost Minds, especially for when it was written, had some issues with balance um, and survivability, especially for new players who may not have as good of an idea of what they're getting into. Um, and I think this one will be a little bit better for that. I also really like the variety of the encounters and areas that players get to go into in this one. Like I said, I feel like this is very representative of what Dungeons and Dragons should feel like. There should be dungeons, there should be travel, there should be um, encounters with strange monsters and creatures that are beyond the normal ones you might run into. Um, there's a lot of variety here that really helps players get into things and learn as they go with a full character that they are leveling up themselves. This adventure also goes all the way through sixth level from level one. So it's a decently substantial starting point for any campaign to really get players to the point where they feel powerful and then you can jump into your own campaign, into a homebrew, into modifications of some of the adventure content, or you can use that as a nice closing, because sometimes it's nice for a story to have an end so that you can pick up in a full campaign as your next outing. And then again, with the inclusion of the quest cards, it makes it even easier for new players to understand what they're supposed to be doing. Players have a little bit of agency in choosing what they're going to do, but even if you decide to put it a little bit on the rails for new players, instead of having to force them to take notes when they may be not familiar yet with what's important or what's not, the quest card has all of the basic information for what's expected of them on that quest. So I think for a new DM, this content's very friendly. The handouts are there. so you don't have to go full theater of the mind. Um, it gives you a little bit of variation in how you engage your players and helps you be more successful. Um, it's a little bit friendlier for the amount of prep a DM may usually have to do. So for a new DM, they can get a better idea of kind of things that may or may not work for them and make adjustments as they go. For new players, um, I like that it lets you make your own character. In a lot of quick starts, you don't get to do that. Um, and so it can be hard to tell how that feels. 
and you're forced to try to build a relationship with a player character that you didn't make, um, which can be difficult for being really engaged with the game. And again, I love the variety. I love the handouts. I think it's going to make it a lot easier for new players to figure out what they're supposed to be doing and be more tactile, visual, and engaged in those processes. Overall, I think for the price point, it's a great way to get into the system or for established DMs, a way to have another pretty substantial piece of adventure to work from, um, along with some ideas for handouts that you can kind of put together and use in your other games if they work for your group. I think it's also a great way to try a duet or one or two player game um, to see how that works so that you can see how you can be successful in the game without having a full standard four to five person party. I love the direction they went in with kind of doing a crossover with D&D Beyond Access and physical content. I think that combination is so important because sometimes it's easier to reference physical or easier to reference or pull certain things from digital and being able to have both without making that decision of which one should I go with is so great. I understand that's difficult to do in a lot of cases because books aren't shrink wrapped and so including a code is a little difficult, but in this case, I think it's gonna work really well and I hope they find ways to do that in the future. We will definitely be taking a look at this adventure content later and I will be discussing with my player in my duet game, Santiago, um, what he thinks about these single player rules with sidekicks and how that's surprisingly not that dissimilar to what we do, except we do use full um, characters. So we'll see like how that plays out and what he thinks about it as a player, if that still makes him feel like he's the hero of the story or if it detracts from that in any way. Well, thanks for watching this short. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick unboxing and talk through my thoughts on how this stacks up to some of the other Dungeons and Dragons offerings out there. Um, if you liked this video, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and check out some of our other playlists with actual plays and recaps in Dungeons and Dragons and a variety of other systems. Until next time, barbarians, spend your rage wisely.